Greetings and welcome. My name is Jake Grayson. I'm a wildlife and food forest garden designer and today I wanted to talk about sustainable landscaping. Uh, there we go. So I've got a few features. This is a, a very steeply sloping uh, rear garden, east facing. Um, and yeah, there's a few features in here, so it's a bit bright and sunny. There's, lot, there's paths with, with steps and uh, like the gabions, gabions returning walls, gabions as a kind of feature to, cl uh, to put climbers up into the trees and acting as gabions acting as a, as a barrier as well. Um, and lots of steps and then we've got lots of uh, paths. So the paths, the idea, I've got this self-binding gravel which is from Wales and yep yeah, uh, and it's like a slate self-binding gravel so I'm guessing a kind of artificial mix which is kind of good. These are local river wash stones um, but the sub base is imported. The timber originally was going to be larch but I, I got it from a different timber merchant and ended up not being larch. So the yeah there's this kind of thing about local provenance and it's such a kind of small space that you need to have the structure in there so i built two platforms a platform up, up, up at that end uh, with a retaining wall and a, a gabion here with a retaining wall and you need to have steps and paths and you know level things out just to make it usable to make it usable space as well uh, but by creating the structure you're using up resources and, and how sustainable is that so i think in future yeah i just really would like to be using larch now, there are some larch uh, raised beds which are kind of down here Hello, cat. so you can see that the one down there against the, against the shed uh, that's from garden larch really really nice and don't have to be lined I'm pretty sure they're not treated whereas this stuff is tannalized which is treated so yeah I think it's worth spending the extra money on on using larch uh, for all the for all the timber for the retaining planks and for the um, for the steps and also thinking about the cost these will last a few years but really you know for such a limited small amount of paths it might be better to actually use steel uh, it'd be way more expensive and imagine well i haven't actually checked the price out but i imagine it'd be like four times the price but it would be kind of worth it because then you wouldn't have to re you don't have to replace anything and then what a wonder kind of um what i am wondering about is this stuff it's brilliant <laughs> it's concrete brick rubble it's like a generic rubble from a um, md recycling outside cardigan and they crush it up and there's brick concrete some stone in there as well and and they cry they it's from dust to about 70 80 mil uh so yeah so it's actually and i've just compacted it down so it's acting like a sub base and it's, and it's 100 quid for three tons as opposed to 60 quid for one ton for one bag of sub base and it comes loose so it's a bit of a pain but in terms of a bulk material i think it's actually really nice and i would like to use some kind of crushed concrete and crushed brick in in gabions as well because i think it would look absolutely amazing but that's another another project for another day so yeah so yeah big kind of question is sustainable you know doing hard landscaping how sustainable is it and really just kind of trying to source materials locally and these are like local stones which are dug up out of the soil and reusing stuff which is on site but you can't really can't always do that with you know with the amount of uh, timber that's required so yeah just some, some kind of thoughts and stuff and um yeah i think we'll be going with larch and possibly steel steel paths uh lar and looking at larch as well anyway just a couple of ideas uh <laughs> Hope that was mildly interesting. See you again soon. Oh yeah, I'll be talking about plants soon. Don't worry, this is coming. The paths will be finished in the next couple of days. <laughs> so lots and lots of plants to talk about. Cheers.